You should think positively. How cool that I don't understand something. A karmic reason left, which looks as follows. I cannot escape the past. Any saint has a past. And now it's time for us to work on what we missed. Who among us has so much patience? We are here, we make our request and then go about our business. Master, how to understand the lessons of life? I understand that I am being taught, I am being taught a specific lesson, but I cannot understand what it is, or maybe I understand it too late. I want to understand and not return to this. When you come to a realization and finally understand, when the event occurred, you draw conclusions, you understand why it happened, right? I understood everything only when I started practicing. Let's assume, let's assume. Then, when you understood that those or other events were a lesson for you, which led you to something very important, you can already not return back to those events in order to come back there again, right? You have a karmic reason left, which looks as follows. I cannot escape the past. So by coming into a new quality, a new state, by going through a practical path, by achieving realization, you live in the past and punish yourself for what you did wrong then. But if you had acted correctly then, you wouldn't be sitting here. Correct, relatively, of course. Everything goes its own way correctly. And you should be grateful for the events in which you acted incorrectly. Because I will tell you that any saint has a past, do you understand? And in this past, not everything went smoothly. But any sinner can become holy. Therefore, don't be a sinner while being in a state of holiness. If you start thinking badly about yourself in a state of holiness, about the one who no longer exists, then you sin, and here the contradiction arises. If I don't understand something right now, there is no need to pay attention to it. Here, there is no need to worry. If you don't understand something, you should think positively. How cool that I don't understand something, because if I start understanding, then it's... And when you start digging, what concept comes to mind? He is looking for a catch everywhere, right? You do not understand what this should lead to, but you suspect, and suspicion is very pleasant, and a completely different model of existence or perception begins. This is incorrect. Yes, and in general, the less you know, the better you sleep. Master, I also have such a significant part of a small experience. There is a state when you don't understand something, what is happening right now. How should I feel about that? You're worried that you're going in the wrong direction. You have a goal, correct? You are moving towards this goal. You do everything you can, as much as it is possible. You are sincere. Sincerely you do what you can. But along the way you don't understand many things. What's the difference? You do what you can, don't you? If you do what you can, it means it is your task, you cope with it. If you don't understand something, leave it without attention. Because your sincere progress on the path and sincere work on everything that you can, this already leads you to your state or your realization, regardless of whether you understand it or not. Okay, I will explain it in a simpler way.
The most sincere progress leaves without attention everything that is not in your power. If some events are not in your power now, you cannot control these events. For example, today it is raining. Can you stop it? You had a thought. How do you get back home? I had such a thought. So you were ready to go out in the rain. You needed to go downstairs, right? But the rain stopped for some reason. And you were given the opportunity to arrive completely dry. Although there was a thought or concern, it was like this with many, by the way. When you are sincerely ready to accept this situation, then this situation unfolds in a different way. And in the end, you will begin to understand what is happening. On the road, not everything is always clear. Leave without attention that which is unclear? Of course. If you have time to sit on a tree stump and eat an incomprehensible pie, then yes, it is an interesting job. Actually, if you have time, you can deal with these questions separately, take your time and figure it out. But if you don't have time, you must move on, then you move on. This is a military principle. You don't know where you are going, but you have a decision to go there. You don't know what awaits you there, confusion, ignorance, but you are moving there because there is a call of the heart, or there is guidance that leads you, and you leave without paying attention to everything that is not in your power. It arises, events arise, but your transmission allows you to easily get past these underwater stones, figuratively speaking, because you are really moving. That is correct. If there is some kind of call, then it is yours in any case. If there is a call that you feel in your heart, no matter what happens to you, you sincerely move towards it. When Sai Baba gathered people for interviews completely different from each other, they were, in my opinion, from the same country, but they did not know each other. And one guy was sitting, so he was looking at Sai Baba. There were women and men there, a man on one side, women on the other, they were sitting in rows. And the man looks at the woman, then looks at the woman, they don't know each other at all. And he tells him, this is your wife. The guy says, Baba, no, this is not my wife. He says, I am an avatar, I know better. This is your wife. The guy got confused. People got confused. This woman also got confused. Baba, no. He says, why? Well, I don't have this. I don't feel this way. And Baba says, correct. Believe this Baba, but not this one. That's it. Very strong games, very serious games. Can you imagine the avatar said, this is your wife? He said everything there. There were cases when Baba said that they would have to get married, and so they got married. And there a whole new mess starts for them. He throws away one wife, well not throws away, he leaves one wife, marries another. Our comrade was like this. Baba married them because they left something unfinished in their previous life. This is peaceful Kirill. From this new marriage they had a daughter, she is a wonderful person. She is from Venezuela, he is from Odessa. His wife is sitting here for an interview, and Baba says, this is your wife, come on. He marries this woman, they have a daughter named Surya Maria Devi, yes, that's what she's called. He lives with this woman for six to seven years, then they divorce, and he returns to his first wife. Well, it's like that, both here and there, in general, everything is fine. I ask Satya Sai to make my journey go well. Sai, is it possible that you do not want my accommodation there? A Sai says, you know what, sit here.
In essence, this is what our ego says, but could it be otherwise? At that moment, you will know what to ask for. Both are in principle quite legitimate requests. If you are going somewhere to travel, you turn to Swami and say, please, I am busy with something. Some Sai devotees even say, you are sending us there. A Baba says, I? I am not sending you, you are going by yourself, figuratively. You decided to go, let's say, to the festival in Navrasisk, and you are worried if you will have a tent or not, for example. And you say, please, I am going to a festival in Navarasisk. Please make sure I have a tent, I need somewhere to stay, or arrange my comfortable stay. And Baba says, yes, good, for example. You have the right to ask, yes, but whether he will do it or not, it is already up to him. Because Baba can say, listen, why did you go there? Who asked you, as an example? What do you want there? If you have such a connection with him, you can ask and say, I need to gain experience. Will you bless me for this trip? I did not ask for permission. That's the whole point. You put God before the fact, I'm going, and help me there on the way. And why don't you ask? I want to go, but do you give your blessing or not? He may say, stay at home. That's the thing. It turns out that we have already decided something for ourselves, and then we say, you are not helping us. He says, so you decided this, but I didn't decide this. Is it allowed to ask for Sai's blessing? To ask a question and wait for the answer? Here is the matter of your heart. Why is practice, prayer, necessary? We have prayer and meditation in Kriya Yoga. Meditation is the highest form of communication with God. But while a person is not in close communion with God, there is still the concept of prayer. Prayer requires effort. When you are in a prayerful state, you feel God's response. Yogananda, for example, felt a sense of joy. He was sitting praying with candles, and until the Divine Mother answered him, even as a child, he did not go anywhere. He entered the temple, he needed to solve some kind of question. He sat down to meditate and sat there simply praying, almost demanding, until he felt an answer, he did not leave. The hours were passing by. Who among us has so much patience? We are here, we make our request and then go about our business. That is why such a correct, very good attitude is required. The work should be done. We must learn to feel. This is our task. Because he is not somewhere out there, he is inside us. This is the closest settlement of the Creator. That is why one should receive the blessing first and then make the trip. You had a question, yes? When you fight with fear, you are afraid to jump with a parachute, for example. And when you jump, you overcome your fear. You will be on many levels higher, and from inside you feel that you don't need it? When Satan took Jesus to the edge of the cliff, above the abyss, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump. What did Jesus answer him? Do you remember, according to the Gospel? He said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. That is to say, yes, you can jump, overcome your fear. It may be good, but you risk your life in order to prove to yourself, your ego, that you are not afraid. You can defeat fear completely differently, without risking your life. Because you can jump with a parachute, not be afraid of death, crash and die. Then what is the meaning of such a life? For example, this may not be a very good example, but it explains something here. There is another option when you evolve, develop, and finding a sense of unity with the Creator, manifesting your will, calmly look into the eyes of any fear because you don't have it. Fear becomes separate from you, you no longer feel fear inside yourself. 
You begin to understand that fear is not some opposing force, but it is already absent in you because you have a sense of unity. By and large, all scary stories are essentially the fear of death. A person is afraid of losing themselves, afraid of losing their individuality. If you achieve the principle of unity in meditation, about which we constantly talk, and you understand that there is no death, then death, as such, no longer has power over you. That is, through spiritual development, through the will aspect. There is, of course, that moment when you are very afraid, but you have something for which you still worry more. For example, a mother is afraid for her child who got into trouble. She is afraid in general, but for the sake of the child, she goes through the most difficult trial and overcoming that fear, which she does not have about her own life. Because there is the life of a child for the sake of which she is ready for anything. That is, she practically overcomes fear in this way. This is a difficult situation, but it works. Why is it better to think in the direction of achieving this state through a positive perception of life, through the absence of fears, such as such, and there are enough of them, through faith and trust in the first place? Babaji, when he incarnated in 1971, that very Babaji, in the body of Haidahan Babaji, he said at the time, these are very harsh times. They, by the way, are happening now. These times will be very scary for many people. But those people who will keep the name of God in their hearts and will be devoted to Him, nothing will happen to them. Either they will be chosen by God Himself. For example, in Islam, there is a concept of people who are chosen by the Creator Himself. By the Most High, they do not do daily prayer, they do not follow these basic principles of Islam. These are completely different people. They are as if from a different Islam, from a different religious world. Many do not understand them. In my opinion, the term Majubi is what they are called in Arabic. These are the people who are chosen by the Almighty Himself. They are His personal instrument. These people do not follow the commandments that are common in Islam. This is just an example. There are also such people in Christianity, that is, they are instruments in the hands of God. They can perform actions that are completely contrary to religious actions because that's what the Creator wants. These are performers, these are instruments. If we want to be a good instrument, we need to prepare for it. And certainly nothing will happen to such people. And now a time comes when, let's say, anti-forces are very active, and they are active for one very important reason, which looks approximately like this. We all need to change drastically. That is why these forces behave this way. They specifically form in us that great spiritual, let's say, composition, that force to which we strive, we stretch this time, and here the time already forces us to solve tasks faster. Imram, you mentioned that when Avatar Satya Sai was in the body, interviews and interviews were conducted in his ashram in Puttaparthi. What distinguished them from each other? The interview was held not only in Puttaparthi. Interview happens everywhere and anywhere, even at home, in your bedroom, when you sleep, through dreams. Baba came to me, this is my personal experience, and Khadija also had her own experience. Where we live, he appears at some point when it is important to deliver something. Interview, when physically somehow Baba gathers a group of people and he approaches the one sitting and says, how many people in the group came? They say, let's assume that 25. He says, go, and everyone stands up carefully. From the female side and from the male side, they go. They squeeze into this small room and everyone sits there. He is talking, this is an external manifestation. 
This is inter, and inner is the inner state when you pray, practice, when you call to the higher. Fall asleep, Baba suddenly comes to you and you find yourself in a conscious, completely conscious state where you have the opportunity to communicate with Him. And there He gives that which changes you on all levels at once. Such as Sai Baba immediately said, not an interview, here you all dream of an interview interview, but I will tell you that it's not an interview, but an interview, 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 that's what He said. Because when you come to me in person, in an interview, you sit happily. I tell you, explain, you perceive something, but there your mind works. Of course, there the heart works, there are colossal amounts of energy. But nevertheless, when you receive something from me, you leave and remain almost the same as you were. But when I come to you in a dream, in your spiritual aspect of existence, that is, through your heart, through that, when your consciousness perceives me in a pure form, you change on all levels. At this moment, there is no filter that changes it. You know, the truth flows all the time. It channels through us every second, through everyone, but it passes through this foolish filter called the mind. That is why you need to switch off the mind. The switch for the mind is called Kriya Yoga. This is its basic aspect. Kriya, of course, is the principle of unity, so it cannot be said that it is only mechanics. But at the initial stage, it excludes the mind, so we work with this. Fraudsters who are calling, what kind of people? Did you watch the movie Buratino? What were Alice and Basil the cat singing there? While there are fools in the world, it became possible for us to live by deception with our hands. Normal people. They make money off of such foolish people who fall for it. That is, in simpler terms, there is nothing special here. This is a social life. There are many demons. If this world is like a swamp and we must eventually return there from whence we came, then why are we here? What is all this for? In order for you to learn to love, in order for you to learn to transform, in order for you to gain maximum experience, in order for you to practice what you started in past incarnations, life used to be different. There is a very high quality, very good, very creative materialization, but everyone has a negative aspect to their positive. Now the following has just happened. People fell asleep in this positivity and allowed negativity to take control. And now it's time for us to work on what we missed. You are raising a child. At some point you started to raise him too lovingly, made him selfish. Now he is an 18-year-old brat, excuse my expression, who behaves inappropriately and does not respect you. I'm not talking about you now, God forbid. Who is to blame for this? Love. Love. Sometimes a thought arises, why did I give birth to him in this case? Better had I never given birth to him. That's what his mother said to him then. My mom used to say to me. <laughs> there. And who is to blame? I say, and why didn't you raise me then? She goes, you will be raised, of course. That is why love is not to blame here. It is the egotistical perception of love by the parents themselves that is to blame. When a mother runs like I don't know who after her child, not allowing him to develop, what will become of this child? He never fell. He didn't stick his finger in the socket. He didn't gain any experience. And mom doesn't give him anything, nor grandpa and grandma. And then what well-fed but not well-mannered? It is necessary for the child to gain experience, but it is necessary to observe him, of course, when an extreme situation arises. 
The work of the Master is similar. We created this world ourselves in this way. This is my answer to your question. This world is our child. You create it yourself. How many mistakes I have made in life? I knew that I was committing them, but I made the decision and did it. Having made a decision, I made a mistake because once I have made a decision, I do not go back. The warrior of light does not stop. If he has made a decision, he goes until the end, even knowing that he is mistaken. He needs to gain experience. You gain experience, you don't do it the same way next time. Either you, if you know that it will lead you to the wrong sad ending, then do not express intentions, just know that you should not do it, and that's it. What did Winnie the Pooh used to say in his time? We need to do what needs to be done. Do you need this piglet? No. Then don't do it. By the way, have you ever watched the old Soviet cartoon about Winnie the Pooh? Yes. This is a Taoist treatise. I'm serious. When we had a group, we were engaged, we studied Tao, we practiced and so on. My comrades came to my house with whom we practiced martial arts, studied philosophy, Tao Te Ching, and Mariam was so young, she was only a few years old. We had a videotape, and six or seven, and sometimes even more healthy people sat for an hour and a half. Not laughing, watching, studying this cartoon, really, because every word there is a revelation. You look, you will understand what I'm talking about. There is a book from 1985, in my opinion, that was released in America, Winnie the Pooh. Received a huge circulation. Yes, however, I have not read the book. I remember I had it, even now I have it, but I didn't read it. I was interested in watching a cartoon. Practically everything is there. Tao Te Ching, if you know what Zen is. Zen, this is in Chinese. Chan, this is in Japanese. This is the correct perception of the world. When you ask a child, what are you doing? A child is sitting, let's say, tearing paper there. You ask him, what are you doing? That is, in your understanding in general. How are you? How are you doing? Such figurative expressions. He says, I'm tearing paper. Yes, I see, but that is, you understand what I'm talking about. In this cartoon, there is also a lot of everything. Once upon a time, there lived a little bear named Pooh. What is so special here? Yes. He lived under a sign that said Pooh, and he lived under it. Understand the title? And he wasn't even Pooh, it was just a name there. And everyone thinks that he is Winnie the Pooh, for some reason that's what he's called. In reality, he didn't even know that's what he was called because there was just a sign there. And when you look at all this, you think either you've gone crazy or everything is very serious. Yes. And how much of this is in life? Could you imagine yourself coming to the Olympic Village, to Krasnya Polyana? I don't know that Rosa Hutor is here. I always get confused about where we are. But the funniest thing is something else. You laugh here about what I said. I find it funny that you are sitting here now. Do you understand what you are doing here? Why? What's happening here? Why are you sitting here, on mats? Can you imagine at some point in the past thinking that you would be sitting here on mats, rugs in 15 to 20 years? And in 10 years, when you will already be Winnie the Pooh, you will say, so what were we doing there, sitting on Rosa Hutor? We analyzed a cartoon, yes.